All right, welcome back, everyone. Feels great to be back, live and in the flesh. At least for what is it? A couple hours here. Uh, I hope so. Oh, and there's a Uh little echo there, but we got it. So, welcome to Tabletop Bob, and welcome to Icewind Dale: Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. This special episode, episode forty-three, is titled "The Rhyme of the Frost Maiden." It's not the end. I don't. Well, who knows? I don't. The roll credits. I hope not. But it is a the title. The titular episode. Oh. <laughs> now so, I understand when you post it on social media. I thought it was just, hey guys, we're playing the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden today. But that's the actual title of the episode. Yep. The yep. title of the episode. So I'm excited. Let's let's uh introduce the characters and then we'll oh wait, hold on. Before I forget. This Thursday here on the channel. Again, we're back to live games. We took a couple episodes off, but now we're back. We have Icewind Dale tonight. And on Thursday night, we have The Keep on the Borderlands, episode five, The Mound of the Lizardmen. You excited for that one, everybody? I'm excited. I remember how that episode ended. The last one? Episode episode four ended on quite a cliffhanger. Yes, it did. I'm excited. (laughs) Yes, it did. And they are low level still. They are low level. And they are they're in, in trouble. Quite a pickle. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, they have they have two meat shields. They, <laughs> they actually have three, to be honest. But Who's the third. <laughs> well not the yeah. Jeb. What's what's his name? Not Jeb. Zeb. Zed. <laughs> and who's Zeb. the third one? Well, that not. I forgot about not. And then there's also uh uh Jeff's character, Scory. He's a fighter now. Oh. No, I, but was it's gonna about, take... I was talking about meat shields that we don't care about. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Jeff, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Um, but you know what? It doesn't matter what level you are, because tonight you all are in some serious trouble, and you're seventh level. So I'm a little anxious myself, I'll be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I love it. It's going to be great. All right, so let's introduce the characters. We'll do a bit of a recap, and then we'll dive into the game. Let's start tonight with... Andrew. Ah, hello. I am Elias Dawnstrider, cleric of Lathander. I am the spiritual leader of the Free Musketeers. That's right. And, and I'm, I've already yeah. spoken to the Frost Maiden, so. <laughs> and you're, I was going to say, you're also no longer possessed by the spirit of Nas Lantimere. Nope, no longer possessed, no longer insane, fully sane, fully here. Fully sane, fully here. Perfect. 100% sane. 100% present. All right, let's go up to Stefano. Hey, guys. I am playing Julius Valerian, the Eladrin elf blade singing wizard. And I'm just fine and dandy. And I am uh, ready to take up the tor- torch for the group just in case something <laughs> bad happens. You're not upset at all about any of the events that have happened in the last couple episodes, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Let's... you know, my girlfriend's dead. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, Dasha. I'm Bella Farfell, and uh, I'm ready to go. I have most of my spell slots. I'm not that low on HP, and I'm ready. It's very nice to have Vel in this, this uh, proper wizard here to help you out. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> spicy. spicy Joey. Uh, I am playing uh, Rogal V2, um, uh, Dragonborn Paladin. <laughs> Wanted to put like a little accent on it. I don't know. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> when did he start pronouncing his name that way? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, it's the character we've all been waiting for for 43 episodes. Finally, his full name comes out. <laughs> Spelled with, with two A's, of course. Uh, <laughs> Go on. Go on. Uh, he's playing a, a dragonborn paladin. Um, Got got a pass on the uh, the 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 tests of exhaustion because he was a good boy, unlike his compatriots. Um, 
<laughs> now he's carrying uh, the leader of the three other musketeers, uh, Edmund Bryceen, on his back. Oh, I thought it was on the polar bear. Oh, he's on the. Polar are bear. we? Are we? Oh, yeah, it's true. I did put him on the polar bear. Yeah, we'll talk more about the polar bear in a moment, as well as Ukuma. <laughs> Edmund, I mean greetings, <laughs> friends. I am Edmund Bryceen, and I am exhausted. <laughs> Oh, yes, and you are. Friend to elf and man. Wink. Nice. Yeah, you might as well say it. You might not be able to say it. I know. Might have been his I last intro. Leader of the Three Musketeers, exhausted. <laughs> Five levels of exhaustion. I cannot move. I am half of, of my uh, hit points. I cannot do anything with advantage, or I have disadvantage on everything. And I just cannot move. Yep. It is it is very hard for me. I'm hoping that someone or something will be able to carry me out of here quickly as we need to get to Angajuk, our friend the whale, so that we can get out of here and find the uh, entrance in the Ragged Glacier to whatever the codicil Yithrin. of the white. Yes, I'll recap a little bit, but you did a nice job there, Edmund, going through most of what's been happening. So last time, everyone, the group took the tests of the Frost Maiden. Uh, these were four tests: cruelty, isolation. Uh, I'm forgetting them all. Preservation was one of them, and uh, yeah, that their endurance. That was the last and one. Yes, the entertainment. One Edmund, the one that Edmund hated. <laughs> so you you did all these tests, and slowly uh, a few of you fell off. You weren't able to complete these tests, but ultimately Julius and Edmund and Dasha, I think. Yeah, Velen was able to complete him as well. And then Julius went into the lower chamber to get the codicil of white, which was granted to those who passed the tests of the Frost Maiden. So you have this book in your possession, and uh, that is where we left off. I think Elias actually has it. Oh, Elias has it. Okay. Yeah. Also, didn't we find out that um, Luke is like a prince or something? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, well, it's possible. In in the tests, you found out that Luke uh, had a striking resemblance to the tiger tribe queen, uh, Bjornhild Slovig's daughter. She not only looked like him, but seemed to pause when she saw him in that vision or whatever the test was. But, but Luke, myself, and Edmund do not know this. No. Right. Luke met Bjornhild in the test of isolation. However, the test that revealed that luke was the baby that she was trying to discard was the final test of mm-hmm. preservation and only yeah. julius velen and elias would know this so yes it's a little bit of a secret to some of you mm-hmm. all right everybody here we go icewind dale rhyme with frost maiden episode 43 all right so Let's go into the game. I'm going to switch over to roll 20 and we'll uh, we'll pick it up here. All right. So at the bottom of the screen, that is where you gathered the codicil. And I believe, yes, Elias and Julius are just coming out from, from that chamber. Now, Julius, actually, you had a unique experience. You went to the final chamber past the codicil and you heard the whisperings uh, of the Frostmaiden. What did the Frostmaiden tell you? Uh, I believe... The words were, uh, if you something about if you choose to court death, then you can receive my blessing, or something like that. Will you court death to receive my blessing? And you responded a resounding no. Yeah, yeah. I was very tempted, but uh, I, I, it's I don't really like the Frost Maiden very much. So, yep. And it really seemed like. Courting death wasn't something that we wanted to do at this point. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah. All right. So you have the book in your possession, Elias. I think I showed you what it looked like before. Yeah. I'm going to shout out. I have the book, the codicil of the light. White. Why why are you shouting? (laughs) We got to get out of here. Yes. Do not, do not... I wish to read from it a moment. 
Do Perhaps there is something in it. To us quickly. Look at I it help us. Matters. Dasha, you came in and out there. What'd you say? I said I believe we have more pressing matters than reading the book. We must leave. We need to get out of this place as fast as possible. I want to open the book. All right. I am. Um... Yes, yes, yes. But let us look briefly. Andrew, you have the book in your possession, so yeah. you can do what you'd like. You unhook the clasp that mm -hmm. um, keeps the book shut. The book is uh, very unique. Not only is it unique because of uh, the outer casing, it's encased with uh, wolf fur, but it also is, the pages itself are golden trimmed. I'm gonna actually read a, a little passage here describing what's in the book specifically, but um, the book itself is very interesting. You have a question, Joey? I know you said something. Uh, uh, um, yeah, no, I wanna, well, I mean, you can do this first, but I want to. I want to like talk to the the animals and see, like, you guys want to get out of here, like. Oh, it's, oh the it's animals. Bound in, it's bound in white ermine fur, not wolf fur. Oh, is it? What's ermine? It's a it's like a ferret, isn't it? It's a mink, isn't it? Mink a fur. Mink. You know, the Danes just killed a bunch of them because of COVID or yes. something. A mink. Uh, it's yeah, white ermine fur, seasoned boards of white pine, and sealed with a clasp and locking tarnished silver. There you go. It's cold well, like to the I, touch. Like and I the just said, is worn about the edges from use. Oh, did I give you the entire uh, rules description for description of the book? Yeah. Ooh. You know, you would I think could, you would I think could, that I could learn think, a spell. You would think that they wouldn't give that in the player version. In the handout. Yeah. There you go. There. Now it's gone. You don't have it anymore. It's still up on my screen. Though. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't delete it. <laughs> I didn't close it yet. Great. I want to learn frost fingers. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All right, so the uh, oh, I seal. need this. Fuck. Yes. Well, you have it. You have it. Yeah. yeah. Can someone? Have, can you let me hold it? Just no. For a while. Elias has. I'm it. reading it. Elias, you read the book, and the codicil is clearly uh, written uh, by by people. It has. Uh, it's written in common. You can see the first page has the snowflake symbol of Oriel on it. The pages after that described priestly rituals and ceremonies in chilling detail. Nestled among the descriptions is a spell that wizards can learn, titled Frost Fingers. At the very end of the book, you see what takes up the, the remainder of the pages, a good sizable portion of the 27-page book. And it's called the Rhyme of the Frostman. I'm going to show this to you, and you can you can read that, Elias. Okay, so I'm going to read this. Listen to this, everybody. We sing it. We bow to she who wears the crown. Let the world shiver with dread. Clad in winter's whitest gown, a snow enshrouds the dead. A fury sheds but frozen tears, as grey clouds issue forth. Her wind across the wasteland shears, bringing blizzards from the north. Ice-kissed flowers caught mid-bloom, beauty kept in all its grace. Summer's gone to its silent tomb, stilling in her cold embrace. All the world in winter's white, sheathed in sleet and ice, set upon never-ending night, she conjures paradise behold her everlasting rhyme see how it covers all weep not for those she traps in time behind her glacial wall sovereign of summer's lost general of winter's war long live the queen of cold and frost may she reign for evermore and that's the end that's the end of what it said it seems to link her with the long winter the area around you when you're done speaking that uh, passage, the last passage, uh, gets chilly, even colder than it already is. Andrew, you feel like uh, you don't feel the cold as much. You gain resistance to cold damage. Oh, that's nice. The air around you is also colder. Uh, you feel like you see, even see snow starting to develop in the 
in this palace around you. And then it gets heavier and heavier. Oh dear. Um, but that's it. It continues to snow, and you look around and you look at the group. Group, how do you react? It's time to go. <laughs> yes, I believe we should probably leave. I, I need a rest somewhere, please. And I turn and I look at Rogal and I look at the polar bear and I'm like, can someone please carry me out of here? I just cannot move myself. I'm. I, I pick him up with one arm, just to just to flex a little. <laughs> You could probably do that. He's light. It's like, Rup. so you uh, you're carrying him, Rogal. Yeah, I'll carry him. Um, but I want to I want to talk to the polar bear and Ukuma. They're down. They're down to clown. They want to go with you guys. Yeah, you guys don't want to stay here, right? Mm. Ukuma wants to leave. Polar bear. What is your name? My name is Poe. Poe. Oh, the polar bear. <laughs> would you um, would you mind holding my friend for me? My he friend tried ride on your back. He was shooting at me just a few minutes ago. I did ago. not shoot at you at all, actually, he's, polar he's bear. He was shooting at um the other one. I, I was say. trying to free you from Ravison's, uh, Ravison's control. By by shooting at Ravison, like, by right? Taking out right, Ravison. buddy. Yes. I, was I like turn to... around. <laughs> not dog. And I point at Ravison's corpse. Remember, I I slayed him. Fine, so I'll. You could I'll, be free. I'll take him. Throw him on my back. He's a good guy. He's he's the leader of the three musketeers. So I, I am. Put him on. <laughs> we must make haste now. We we cannot waste any more time. Thank you, Poe. I think we should leave now. I'd like to study this book more. Okay. Uh, I I try and guide Ukuma. Like, let's go, buddy. Sure. We'll head this way towards the stairs, and as you head to the stairs, the Professor Orb starts to glow in Velen's hand. Professor Scant chimes in and says, Oh, this way to the north, this passage must contain Vasavikin's tomb. There might oh, be yes. great we, treasures in there. We did want to kind of peek in there, didn't, I, didn't we? Should we have a little peek? No. no yes. No. We, yes gotta we, get we should. We should. What? All right, who's coming with I me mean, to have a little there's peek? There's gonna oh. be consequences. I, I say, polar bear, would you mind traversing north? I'll walk over there real quick. Does uh, is there magic in the door? I still have to detect magic up. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Great. In the door or beyond the door? Beyond the door. Yeah. Oh, beyond the door. Yeah. I, I'm at the door itself. So the uh. The passageway north leads to an anvil-shaped room with a door set into the far wall. Flanking the door are two bas-reliefs of two female frost giants holding great axes. Uh, runes are carved into the door's surface. Runes? Runes. You don't see any magic Runes. emanating from them, however. It's a written in dwarvish script. I can read that. You read dwarvish? Wait. Yep, I do. The runes on the door are written in dwarvish script, and it reads as follows. In ice and blood, our folk are born. To our great queen, we raise our horn. We'll fight and plunder in the morn. Vasavikin, to Vasavikin, we are sworn. Do you think the door requires blood? Or can we just open it? You probably could just open it. It's their big doors. It's going to take a group effort. Just try right. open it I, I ask Akuma, would you mind? Akuma can't even Barely. fit in there. <laughs> really to open the door. There. Polar bear. The polar bear might be able to get in. Yeah. Poe could help you open it. Sure. All right. So Poe opens the door with you all. He pushes it open. Once the door cracks open, you can you can see that the chamber has another door set into the far wall, and standing on both sides are frost giant skeletons. They wield, Guys. they wield rusty anchors as weapons. They're Guys. on long chains that could definitely, definitely uh, be projected quite a quite a bit. Remove and the hands and feet. The, no, <laughs> yep. these are not frozen. These are, they're frost giants at the ready. Guys, let's not. 
The pinpricks of light in their eye sockets brighten as they register your presence. Guys. <laughs> close the door. Yeah. Forget about it. Oh, come Back on. Back up, close the door. Back up, close the door. We need come to on. Leave. There could be something in there to help us defeat the I, 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 I start pulling people. <laughs> I say, Luke, what do you say? Luke is, uh, he's gibbering, isn't he? No. Uh, Luke is yeah. not gibbering per se. He did gain a, a madness at the beginning of the uh, combat. He was kind of useless, but he kind of snapped together. Uh, I have 17 of 51 hit points and resistance to co- uh, vulnerability to cold. So I am not fighting a frost giant skeleton. <laughs> Fair enough. So the door is only open just a bit. Do you want to uh, continue or not? I would want to continue. Enjoy. I no. walk away. <laughs> no, Elias. There are... What? Ah, uh, here it is. Hold on a second. This is why I can never find anything. I looked for this specific piece of art, like, in preparation for today's campaign, because I actually really like this art piece. I'm going to show you in a second. But the title underneath it in the book says, Frost Giant Skeletons Guard the Way to Vasivikin's Frozen Tomb. I search Frost Giants, Skeletons, Vasivikin's Tomb. <laughs> Watch. You know what this is? I'm going to show you the, the art. Oh, I'll show the, you the art first. Really cool art. Anchors. Anchors. It's called Anchors. <laughs> I, they, they're kidding me with this on Roll20, right? There's no way that this should be the keyword Anchors. Well, they are holding Anchors. Yeah, but it's not the point. Nah. <laughs> That's not what it is. That's not what's going on here, okay? This is why Roll20, shame on you for the art. <laughs> I can Those never find the art I want. <laughs> anyway, all right, now that my uh, little rant is done, let's uh, decide what we want to do here. They look like they're going to fight back. I don't <laughs> think we should. <laughs> let's get out of here. If I wave the book at them, the Codicil of the White, do they do anything? Well, you're kind of behind a door they're yeah. not approaching you um they're standing at the ready if you do anything to endanger the book velen will attack you Ooh, you see velen gearing up and ready right, i stashed the book i stole this book there could be some really cool treasure in there <laughs> there absolutely could be the frost maiden is me. returning soon <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 other creatures I, are after us on this island and we are not in the best state to fight we must leave I, so step, we... I step further away and I say Elias if you want to go in there I'll blast them from afar so what do you say party does anyone want to go in <laughs> no, no I, <laughs> I, I want to but I cannot <laughs> I'll have to come back at some time and, and some other time <laughs> <laughs> I say, whatever you want, buddy, and I take two more steps back. <laughs> I'm well, kind yeah. of at the mercy of this polar bear. The polar bear uh, looks at you, Andrew, <laughs> Elias, mm-hmm. and he looks like you're crazy. He's like, I, I am not opening this door. No. <laughs> All right, let's go. Polar bear ain't dumb. <laughs> he didn't want anything of those frost giants. I bow to the wisdom of the awakened beast. Okay. It's native cunning. All right. All right, so I'm going to move us to the Grimskull map. Or sorry, the Stolsis map. We don't have right, to the Mephits uh, on the way out. You want to blast the Mephits? No, I don't. Oh. Um, I, I, I want to walk past the, uh, the, the tattered, burned, stabbed corpse of the uh, ice giant that we had to kill violently. And just remind mm. Rogal that it was his fault that he died that way. Oh yeah, that what? guy. <laughs> Who just what? wanted to be, just wanted to be beheaded. He stabbed it in the eye. Yeah, because you wouldn't cut its head off, and uh, you'd have to stab it. it in the eye. It needed. It wanted to die in battle. It wanted to die a honorable death. That was not honorable. I know. It could have been. It could have been. Oh my god. If only someone would have just, you know, swung their axe. All right, so here's how this is going to work, everyone. You get to 
you exit Grimskull, the skull-shaped palace where Oriel resides, and you're trying to head back to Ongajuk. Ongajuk was docked at one of the giant docks that are, I guess it was it was north west of you. Mm -hmm. I believe it's all lit up on your screen. Yep, yep, you're pointing to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you have an hour before the Frost Maiden returns. That's ten spaces. So you may move your ten spaces. Rogal, I think you're moving the group. Can I? Um, yes. Hold on. That is... We can get there in 17. I already checked it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, though, do we what? have to return to where we left Angajuk? Was that part of the agreement, or was it... No, we were just going to summon him. We were just going to summon him. We just need to get close enough to the water to summon him. You mm, just need to like, shout his name, right? Uh, how were you going to communicate to him? We, I thought he. I thought we could hear like, really well. You oh, he can hear really you. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just have to like, because that's <laughs> what happened when we left the other place, the the prison. All we had to do was be like Angajuk, and then he like showed up. Right? Yeah. However, right. there was only a few. It was only like one little dock. You know, what I mean, it wasn't very far from where he right. could possibly be. Oh, that's true. I, I would say it's got to be about... within the vicinity. What about sending? Uh, that could work. Uh, I can send him a message, but we still have to get to him. Right. Well, my question is, do we think this is the closest... Like this, right here? Or this? Like, yeah. Is this the closest water? Like, the closest place we can go? Or... And uh, I don't want to... Is possibly there a closer water in a different direction? Because we well, also... Mm. We we can get to that water in ten. Yeah. One, two. You could. That's 2, three, four, five. Two thousand feet. That's seven, ten squares. Eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Ten squares. But how am I going to tell him to go to that particular place? Well, give him the corn. <laughs> yeah. Give, give him the <laughs> longitude and latitude. G eight. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, there's that stone circle there, right? You could just there, tell him, yeah. like, right where you dropped us off, there's a little, like, area of inlet. water. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that curves in. Meet us there. <laughs> well, let me see. How many words do I even have? 25 words. <laughs> Dear Angajuk. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna... I'm yeah, gonna cast... baby eats a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast send in Bob. Okay. And I'm going to say to Angaju, I'm not going to I'm not going to plan this before I do it. I'll just do it. Let's count the words. Angaju. It's Elias. No. <laughs> Don't screw him up. <laughs> tell, we tell can him be picked up. Tell him Julius is here. Up the inlet. Inlet. Inlet's one word. We're at 12. Is it 12. Southwest from the place you dropped us off. That's 20. Bang. Love. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> Best regards. <laughs> Elias. <laughs> you I already said that. You're humble, sir. You know this is our Most illustrious. Most of it's just worship. <laughs> now, your friends, Elias, Rogal, <laughs> it just, Edmund, it's... and then it ends when you say, and Julius. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it just cuts when it says, your friends. Kind. It cuts when it says, your friends. Oh. <laughs> right. So, Angajuk, respond in kind. Angajuk hears this in the water as he's going around eating kelp or whatever whales eat here. I don't even know. And Nothing. he's like, hmm, my friends. Hmm. I don't know who my friends are. Which friends Elias could it be? I have so many of them. <laughs> I did say Elias at the start. You said hello, it's Elias. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> but Elias and which other of my friends? <laughs> I will have to ponder this for a while. For 55 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it takes him a while, okay? he's a, He's slow and steady. 
So he's going to heal. Well, we'll see what happens. Where do you want to go? <laughs> do you want to trust that he's going to find the place? It, it is on the way. Sure. Go for it. We, we can get to... How do I draw? This square. Here. This square in nine. Why is my drawing disappearing? Yeah, ten squares. There you go. Well, ten isn't going to cut it. <laughs> ten is how far we can get. Yeah, we can get ten These squares. Two or ten. Yep. This is ten squares away. This is ten squares away. Depending yep. on how diagonal movement <laughs> works. But the, don't you have to make a check on the tenth square and not the eleventh square? He'll have to make a check. I don't think there's any. Come on, people. We got to make a check. I don't. I it's I wish nice. there was CJ. But just the I one don't who's there's anyway. The I ha I thought the whale oil the whale blubber is an automatic pass. I thought the whale blubber is if you still have it. Yeah. Oh. I believe I still have one. I Would have you like me to flat. smear it on you? He's got Fladrians. I have Fladrians. And I have a potion of cold resistance. So I don't know. If... That's so, also Fladrians. So, <laughs> if you, Fladrians. so if you use the cold resistant potion, you would get uh, advantage on your checks. Yeah. Even if he has disadvantage on his checks? Because the rules on this island are that if you have resistance to cold damage, like Rogal, then so you don't be... get the disadvantage. He would just, he would have his normal advantage for cold weather clothing. Mm. So you'd have an advantage on a check. But to be honest, advantage. if you have the whale oil, you probably yeah. should just use it. I probably should when we make yeah. a check. It's probably. not going to be much good when you're dead. Well, you have to apply it beforehand. I thought it was... you got to take all your clothes off and smear it all over your body. You have to be wearing it works. before you make the check. You can't... Cold. Yeah. Okay, so on the ninth... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take all your clothes. Move, <laughs> move nine squares. Strip him. <laughs> Put all the blubber on. I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. All right, so you can apply uh, on the journey. You can apply the whale oil blubber. Yeah, because you know. I need I need someone to do it for me because uh, you're exhausted. Zero you. movement. I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'll do it for you. Thanks. I go up his shirt, you know, in his front. Oh yeah. His face. You know, it might be. More detail. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> this is the G-rated episode. Keep it G-rated, right. but more detail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I have a quick question. I should have asked this before, probably, but am I allowed to switch out? I'm, I'm not sure since I'm playing an NPC. Can I switch out her prepared spells, different prepared spells that she has? No. Like the ones that aren't on her character sheets? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Even if it no. says in her bio that she has those colors. Oh, spell you color. know what? I guess I guess that would be okay because it would be like up to the DM's discretion. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll message you in the Zoom chat what I'm thinking of or what I thought of switching out before, but I wasn't sure. Well, you had to was... do that during a rest. A rest. Didn't she long rest? Or what would I've had to let you know during the long rest? During I don't the... believe you took a long rest. We you we had a few during the test of isolation test of isolation she took multiple yeah but then you fought yeah okay Got so it. next rest sounds good next rest okay mm -hmm. let's uh move joey you go all right okay joey diagonally up sure. six we're going so, to the right here. so one to the right well <laughs> left well left. Do, we don't want to travel through this one. ice ring though right i think you do do we got to get there as quickly as possible. We can get there by not traveling through the ice ring. All right. Three. Can, Three. Is that okay? Yep. Four. Five. Four. Six. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Seven. Nine. Right? Eight. Down. Left. Minus one? Nope. Or, Keep yeah. going left. Nine. Oh, there are my X's. <laughs> nine. Ten. Pause yourself, Joey. I'll stay on nine. <laughs> Pause yourself. Oh, okay. So nine. We apply whale blubber on nine. <laughs> apply whale blubber, blubber, blubber on blubber. nine. Ten. <laughs> so as you're as you're traversing through Grim uh, Solstice, you hear you continue to hear the screeching, the howling in the in the wind that you've heard earlier when Oriel summoned her guardians to attack you. You you sense that as you're 
as you're on the move, you're being pursued by these predators. Uh, give me a nature check, everybody. Is that a 21? It is. Ooh, net one. I 21 one for Julius. Oh, for... sorry, I have disadvantage. Oh yeah, I've got disadvantage as well. Yeah. yeah. I got a zero. Ooh, uh, still a 20. A three, it got even worse. Hmm. Okay. I got a 20 and a 21. Okay, no worries. Even Dasha got an 8. <laughs> okay. All right, so you keep traversing, and you get to... You pass this... Uh, the broken ice wall that you fought the ice troll in. <laughs> and it's at this point where you you have to kind of be aware. You're looking around, all around you. It, it is It is still the aurora in the sky, although that is coming to an end very soon. But you're looking around because it sounds like the screeching is surrounding you in all directions. Let's move over to another map here. No. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just say that this map is a little inverted here because you should be on the north of the wall. But uh, it's fine. Place your characters in the center. Oh, Why is Velen so tiny? Uh, <laughs> All right, is everybody here? Uh, the polar bear and Yokozuna are not. <laughs> Yokozuna. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. God. Perhaps we should stay and fight the frost maiden. Like we could end this now. I think that's what we're about to do. Ed <laughs> Edmund can't move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the polar bear. There you go. There's Akuma. And polar bear. Okay. Gonna keep the polar bear's stats here. There we go. All right. So you you head to this valley here, you come past the ice walls, and it's at this point where you're surrounded by that sound. Uh, the You notice that the snow is falling rather heavily now, um, so you can't really see much more than, I'd say, I'd say 60 feet in front of you. And the wind is loud. It's, it's, it's uh, even louder because of the screaming these creatures are producing. Let's uh, roll initiative here. Go ahead, Joey. God, I thought we had ten squares. <laughs> oh, one. Oh, uh, one. Hey. Oh, okay. That was five. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That was me. You're good. You can All right, let's sense. Keep running. <laughs> no, you can. You can sense that these creatures are somewhere around you. You can't see them, but you know based on based on the last ten nine squares that you moved that they have been following you and they're surrounding you now. We got we got to just push our push our way through. Go ahead. One of move yourself. Make it got to make it to the ocean, right? Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Um, <clears throat> which way is the ocean from from where we're at? It would be west. All right. Um I guess I 1 2 3 4 5 6. Yeah, now there are ice walls here, but do, I mean just basically going to the west is what you kind of need to do. And I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. Great. Um, Go ahead. Next. Who's next? Did my did my nature check tell me that we were surrounded? No. It didn't do anything? Uh, it was a group check. Got it. I got it. Where did Joey go? Joey went north. Aren't we supposed to be going west? Yeah. He went, like, northwest. No. Yeah. How's the visibility? Uh, it's 60 feet. Okay. Actually, um, um, instead of casting Shield of Faith on myself, can I, can I cast uh, level 2 Cure Wounds? Uh, sure. Yeah. Boop. And... 
Uh, you can go, whoever would like to go next, the group can go. Um, so I'm just checking the uh, mounted combat rules. So an independent mount retains its place in the initiative order. I'm assuming that the bear, because it's awakened, has... Has its retains, own place, yeah. Mm -hmm. It has its own place. So he gets to basically drag me around. I yeah. don't really get to tell it what to do. I would agree. So. But oh, okay. I, I mean, I guess it can suggest to it that we run. Oh, okay, yeah, you could you could reason with it. You could talk to it. Yeah, I mean, I can. Like... I'll also say, Edmund, just for ease of play, that if you would like it to go on your turn, we can do that. I will just control it. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, I kind of tell the polar bear like we should probably continue heading west and try and get out of here as best we can. Oh, by the way. How did you guys get to this island? I know you and Ravison just showed up. How did you guys get here? Are you talking about the, the polar walrus? bear and Ra no the, the polar bear? Oh, the polar bear. Yeah, Ravison. Uh, Ravison brought him along. Yeah, but how did you get here though? What mode of transportation brought you to this island? I guess he would swim. Okay. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Ravison is uh, a follower of Oriel, so she may spend quite a lot of time here on this island. Yeah, okay. All right. So that was uh, Edmund. No, sorry. That was Rogal. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. Do we get to go? Yeah. 10, 15, yep. 20, 25. I'll go here. I'll do exactly the same thing as Joey and do, um, what's it called? Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. That's it. All right. Next. I'm going to go. Uh, can I kind of send... I want to send Muffin, like, over here. Is Muffin in, back? Muffin's, Muffin has been back. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, but also kind of in the air to try to scout the area. Sure. So maybe, like, Muffin's 40 feet in the air, scanning yeah. the ground. Yeah. Give me a perception check. All right. It is... Plus two, and Muffin gets advantage. Roll two. Here we go. 17. Muffin cannot see anything. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep Muffin kind of hovering in the air and scanning, though. Okay. Uh, Next. And I, wait, sorry. I'm going to move. Uh, before I move, I'm actually going to bonus action Blade Song. Okay. And I'm going to use my action to cast Greater Invisibility on this. Ooh, myself. look at you. Um, let's will... put a little token above your head here. Let's put a little, uh... Yeah, let's put a little vapor on you. Cool. Okay, so you have and Greater Invisibility up. One, two, three, four, five... Cool. All right. Now we go to who's left. Elias? Edmund? Oh, I went. Edmund. Uh, I'm just at the whim of the polar bear and ask him to move and try and move as quickly and as far as he can. Polar bear moves 40 feet there, dragging you along and says, we got to we gotta hurry up out of here. Continues pushing on. And then as it gets to this point on the map, Edmund, something jumps out at the polar bear. It's You've seen a creature like this before, but this one's different. This one is much larger than the yetis you've seen before. Out from the uh, snowy um, embankment here charges the yeti at the polar bear. And it's going to attack with its prepared action here. So let's start with... Uh, here we go, it's claw. On the polar bear. Ooh, I believe that's going to hit. Where did my polar bear stack go? Here it is. Okay, so the polar bear gets hit by the Yeti's claw. And it's going to do a total of 15 slashing and 6 cold damage. I'm going to write that down for the uh, polar bear. Uh, the polar bear stops abruptly. And it's at the end of its turn, it's going to take its attack on the Yeti. It kind of bucks around. Uh, you're, you're able to hold on, though. It's not 
It's not going to throw you from it. Polar Bear will uh, bite back. And the Polar Bear gets a 21. That's going to hit the Yeti. And it's going to do a total of... Eight piercing damage. Okay, so I've got the two creatures locked in combat here. Edmund, you can take your turn. Uh, I'm going to, I guess, from the top of this polar bear, uh, try and attack it with uh, daggers. Uh, I'm within melee, right? I can just. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're taking up this space. Disadvantage. Fourteen to hit. Uh, Fourteen does not hit. Bonus action? Yeah, I don't really have anything I can do as bonus <laughs> action. Hide. 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 <laughs> if you can hide, we're not top of the polar bear. I can't really hide. hide on top of the polar bear. Hide it as far. <laughs> you can take the dodge action. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I don't think you can do no, that. No, I can't. That's a, that's a different type of rogue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. All right, Velen. Uh, Velen will move um, right here uh, so that she has good aim on the Yeti and she'll use uh, her Wand of mes- Magic Missiles. To okay. Hit. Really saving the good stuff. Yeah. So it's 3d4 plus 3, right? Yeah. Nine damage. Nine. Perfect. Okay, so nine damage to the Yeti. Let's go mm-hmm. to Luke and then Ukuma. Luke is going to charge right up to Edmund. He's going to throw a spear at the Yeti. Uh, let's see. Andrew, can you throw the spear for Luke? I just rolled a d20. Yep. All right, he's got, got plus 12. six to hit, so a total of 18. That's good. Do a d6 plus four for his damage. Nine. nine. Nice. Okay, and then we go to Ukuma. So Ukuma, unfortunately, is a little slow. She can only go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's at this point that another Yeti pops out. This one's considerably smaller, though. This one is not as, as large as the Yeti that you're fighting, Edmund. All right. There we go. So the Yeti's going to attack Ukuma, and then we'll go to the group. So why don't we just decide what you'd like to do? I'll do Ukuma and the Yeti while you discuss. Can we just run away, or do we have to kill everything? We can run away, but I don't know that it's... We can absolutely run away. Because I have a wall of fire. I could put a wall of fire between us. Like only lasts a minute, but it's how like long is the wall? To move. I mean, it's it's 10 60 minutes. feet. It well, can be 60 feet long. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You know, you could put a wall of fire between us and these two yetis, and then we can move up here, and then another yeti pops up. That still put two yetis behind us. That is true. Yeah. All right. I so see, we're gonna I, roll. I like this plan. You like the wall of fire plan? I do. The run away and then wall the fire plan. Let's uh, it, let's roll for initiative here. Uh, They're just going to chase us, I guess. Roll for initiative. All right. You want me to roll? CJ, but oh. you can roll next. It's okay. Oh, I'll, I'll... Okay. They got to go first here. All right. So the uh, the lead yeti is going to go first. Uh, the bigger yeti next to Edmund is going to attack. It's going to use, let's see here. It's going to attack the polar bear with its claw twice. Actually, no, no, it wouldn't do that. It's actually going to look at all of you, Luke, Edmund, and the polar bear, and it's going to breathe a cold breath out at all three of you. Give me a dexterity, sorry, constitution saving throw. I don't know if you have any, uh, you still have a disadvantage on these, but... Uh, nothing else, right? It's not like you fail it automatically, right? 
even know. But well, three maybe. does. <laughs> a three does, yes. All right. Um, Can you roll for Luke, Andrew? D20, right? Yeah. 10. This is considered an attack? It's a breath attack, yes. Okay, so when an attacker hits you, you can see hits you with an attack, I can use my reaction to have the damage against me. My uncanny dodge. Do you get that if your speed is zero? I don't know. It just says an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack. Because okay. I really, really need this. Yeah. So you take 53 damage. Because otherwise, I'm still dead. Yeah. Let's see here. Luke, what did Luke roll? 10? Yeah. His dex is going to be plus, uh, plus 3. So that's going to be... Oh, you said it was constitution. Oh, it's constitution, yes. So Luke's constitution is plus... Plus one. So that's going to be a failure on his part. Edmund, you failed. Yep. And the polar bear, which I have to roll for. Polar bear is going to fail as well. The polar bear is dead. <gasps> what? Polar bear gets blasted by this uh, 53 damage and oh. uh, slumps to yeah. the ground. Edmund, you fall to the snow beside the polar bear. Edmund... Also also dead. Oh! You take how much damage from that with half? Half of 53 is 26. No, is it? 20, 27. 26. Rounding Which down, right? the amount of health I have because I'm already at half of my maximum hmm. hit points of 52. Gotcha. So I'm at zero. Zero exactly. Got it. Okay. So you're dying. Dying. Okay. Uh, Luke gets blasted for that 50 and he goes down to zero as well it doesn't double him up but he's at zero as well oh my god wait what was this this is cold a breath cold breath from a from yeti this yeti looks looks for a built from a different cloth from the yeti down below you can see the picture different right god. yeah yeah age panic mode okay oh let's go god. who's next Well, whoever's Don't fine. That... Give it a shot. <laughs> Do I some mean, wizard stuff. I yeah. mean, Joey's got to heal someone. <laughs> I have some lay on hands. I'm well, first. You're doing an attack. I'm gonna cast fireball probably on the Yeti and keep running away. <laughs> well, Edmund can't even move. He's he's level five exhaustion and his mount's just been killed. I guess the walrus can pick him up. I think we gotta kill these things. Yeah, I think so. Oh my god. So Val can attack? No, go for it. Go yes, on. So seeing how damaging that cold breath was, she realizes she has to um, take out the big guns and she will cast Blight on the big Yeti. Which I believe... Oh, Val, and I apologize. You're actually in that cold breath as well. Oh, oh my God! Okay. Yeah. Wait, what? This is how Wait. this is how far it is. I I knew it was. You wouldn't get in it, but that's there you go. That's the okay. breath. So do oh. I make a con save or? Yeah, con save. Mm -hmm. And then you're using blight on the yeti. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe she won't survive. <laughs> no, she'll survive. Oh my god. Oh, Are we gonna die? No, I think I'll be fine. 14. You fail. You fail. So, so you take 50, damage? 53 damage, yeah. So I'm down pretty far, but I'm gonna go ahead and attack with, um, because my total is 67. Yeah. Blight, is that con? Is Blight Sorry? a con save? Blight is a con saving throw, yeah. Um, 24. Sure it's going to pass, but so, you'll do half damage. Roll your damage. Great. 36, so 18. 18. Gotcha. Not, not great. No, it's 18's 18. 
Yeah, and she'll move back out okay. of this. Okay. Well, that's gone. It's not there forever. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so the next Yeti goes. It's going to attack the walrus. By the way, the walrus managed to retaliate pretty well last time. Did, uh, what did it do? Uh, 13 points of damage with a belly flop or something like that. So cool. the walrus is winning this battle down here as the Yeti and him attack. So we'll, we'll, we'll do the walrus and the Yeti, and you guys can go next. So who's up after the walrus and the Yeti go? Who would like to go? I can go next. Go ahead. We got the Yeti fighting over here. All right. Bonus action, healing word on Edmund. He gets... Two plus my spell cast and ability. He gets two plus four. He gets six back. I'm going to do bonus action sacred flame on the mega yeti. You mean <laughs> regular, a, regular deep, action? Yeah, which is a DC 15 dex save. DC 15? Yeah. Okay, abominable yeti. All right. Dex not so great. 10. No, so he fails. So he takes 13 radiant damage. Radiant? Radiant, yep. you say? No, mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. Seems to all go through. <laughs> then I'm going to go and ex explore the area over here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want to explore over here? When I say explore, I mean run away from the Mega Yeti, but... Oh, crap. <laughs> a third Yeti charges at you from behind the snow wall that it's been hiding behind. So we go to uh, attack you, I'll roll, and then we can go to somebody else. Because I think all the Yetis have gone. So we'll do the claw for you, Andrew. Claw for the walrus. All right. Who's up? Um, can I go? Sure. All right, so Edmund's up. Edmund is, is up. alive. Yes. All right. So Edmund is prone with six hit points, <laughs> and zero speed. And zero speed. <laughs> so he can't stand up. All right. So I'm I'm gonna um walk over here. Can I pick up Edmund? Please don't. Is that an action? Um. I usually just say if you're gonna like drag him somewhere, it's just gonna take half your movement. Okay. Um, I want to cast a land hands point on Luke. One point, yeah, just to get him up. Yeah. And then I, I prep myself to drag uh, Edmund to get the okay. hell out of here. All right. So then I cast him. Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. I'm gonna just delete the polar bear. Is that all right? Get him out of here. Yeah. Um, He's in the. Oh! I, I I like. I do a little sad thing for Poe. Poor Poe. All right. Poor Poe. I was going to be his fin. I believe you were going to be his fin. So you were going to be the comic relief that never yep. really got an arc? Yep. Okay, got it. Go for Julius. How tall are these yetis? Uh, the abominable one probably stands like 15 feet tall. Okay. They're pretty tall. They're, they're large creatures still. It's not statistically so, bigger than the than the regular yeti uh first i'm sending muffin out over here to continue scanning the area muffin does not see anything else okay i didn't see those other yetis either so now the yetis <laughs> have pretty good stealth checks when it's uh snowing okay <clears throat> and then i will cast fireball at this stupid thing okay uh which one the big one okay Back the here? strong one. Uh, yeah, far obviously far back enough so that I don't kill three you just of my clip party him. members. <laughs> yeah, you just want to clip them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your spell save? I think it's 15. 15. He but fails. Um, what's his dex? Check. Fails. Cool. All right. Total of 14. Big money here. Lots of sixes. A lot of ones. Oh, wow. That's the wrong. What a terrible roll. There's a, oh my. a Julius fireball. Hey, I got a 34. 
a couple sessions ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, 22 damage of fire to the Yeti. He's he's angry as his singed fur kind of gets matted down. And then I'm going to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, Ukuma think is going to go, and uh, Velen, you can go as well. Ukuma does a belly flop and tusks. Why doesn't he use his sword? That's actually just a harpoon from the stock art that like hunters hunting a walrus. Uh, okay. So the tusk goes through for 20 damage on this Yeti over here. All right. Let's go to uh, Velen. Uh, I'll try Ray of Sickness. Which would Yeti? The, ab- the Abominable Yeti? Abominable Yeti. Every time I've tried this one, it's failed, but let's try it. Is that a, it's a con? Con save throw, yeah. Total of 14. I think that'll, that fails, I believe. Find out what your spell save DC is. Oh, it's 14. Does so it... it passes. Okay. Does Ray of Sickness not do anything if it passes? It's one of those all or nothing? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Unfortunately. All right. If it if it's not, let me know and we'll come back to it. All right. Roll initiative, yeah. Andrew. I got a three. Seven. All right, group, you're up. Oh, I didn't. Atta- I was. I didn't attack last turn. Oh, Edmund. I thought you uh, went. I apologize. Go ahead. No, I, I didn't. Because I didn't roll a death save and I didn't attack. So. No, you're 100 percent right. Go ahead. Uh, I will swing my. Sh- uh oh, I'm prone. <laughs> I'm still on the ground, but I'll at least try and swing so, because so things with disadvantage. Am I crazy? You can stand up, correct? Because it's half your movement. You have a zero, half of zero, zero. Am I? I, I don't know. I would assume. I feel like but it, it doesn't matter because I have disadvantage That's either true. way. So, uh, aren't you swinging from Rogal's shoulders? Um, I, I believe I'm like on the ground. Like Rogal's like, I'm like lifted you. He's lifting yeah, like, you I'm, up. I'm like, I'm like seated, like you know how yeah. like when like they drag people like from under their their arms, like yeah. He's like dragging me backwards that way, and I've got like the sword and I'm swinging at the <laughs> uh, <laughs> at the yeti as he's trying to drag me backwards. You do manage uh, to hit with a 16 I, though. All right, so I get him for 10 piercing damage with my uh, with my short sword. Hey, that's a pretty nice attack. That's yeah, a pretty nice attack. Would have been a lot better if someone was next to him, but you know. All right, let's go to the Yetis. Uh, let's go with the Yeti up here. Oh, no, it's it's still Arch. That was that was my last. Round. Oh yeah, uh, duh. Oh, so, so now it's our turn. Now it's the group's turn, and it's Andrew turn won the again. roll off. So go ahead, Andrew. Oh, what well, can I go first? Mm-hmm. Would you Would you like to go first? Well, obviously I would like to because I can disengage this Yeti. But is it the most efficient thing? Well, at the time? decide who's going. The most efficient thing is to do damage to this abominable yeti so that yeah, it can uh, die. I'm going. So yeah, you go. I agree with that. I go one, two, three. Are you still invisible? I am totally invisible. Nice. It's greater invisibility. I, greater invisibility. I'm invisible for a freaking hour. <laughs> like uh, I'm watching the snow, the footprint, the snowy footprints just appear. I'm gonna shout, Dwegar here, the Dwegar. <laughs> uh, I'm going to attack twice with Faisal. Sure. Advantage because you're invisible. Yes. Oh, cool. That I did not know. Yeah, you're unseen. Well, good thing I had good advantage. Job. All right. The first one's got 24. So, first one is 24. That is. That'll hit for a uh, lowly six damage. And now I will attack. Second attack with advantage, and I'll booming blade this one. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I got a crit. Oh, yeah. Almost oh, a crit. So close. So, Faisal will do eight. Booming blade will do one, but fifteen if the stupid thing moves. <laughs> so, what what you do total? did six and eight so i did six eight and one so okay. 15 total okay and if this 
Yeti moves on its turn, it'll take an additional 15. Correct, yeah. Okay. However, I am now going to leave because I don't take Mobility. Yeah. op attacks. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's good. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna and I'm gonna have uh, Muffin try to distract this guy, so, or give aid to I guess the next attacker. Sure. So after you swipe at this yeti and you run away, retreat to safety. The yeti turns its gaze to you. Give me a Constitution saving throw, Julius. Uh. Okay. Fifteen. So the Yeti turns and gives you a chilling gaze. Its eyes glow blue. And for a moment, you are paralyzed. You realize you can't move anything on your body. Arms slumped to the side. You're paralyzed for the duration. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of your turn. Does it have to see him? He's invisible. Oh, right, you're invisible. Oh, yeah, I'm invisible. Never mind. It does need sight. Yep. So then let's do it on Rogal. Give me a constitution saving throw. When he gets back. Oh, he's not here? Oh, okay. (laughs) he walked away. This is a very professional production that you can tell. Yes. Very good. Yes, Joey, come back. Often on, you know, shows like Critical Role. Con save. save, Or you're paralyzed. Okay, fine. On Critical Role, the people leave the table all the time during the game. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, Now you're in trouble. Give me a constitution saving throw. Yeah, Marisha Ray is just constantly getting up. This won't happen after after 10 o'clock. A 14. So it's actually an 18, though. Right, because you have your charisma bonus to it. Yeah. Okay. All right, Rogal, you succeed. This Yeti gives you a, a chilling gaze. Eyes glow blue. However, I gaze you, right back. You were like, able mm, to. My eyes are blue, too. That's right. You are able to uh, fend off this mind attack here. All right. Let's go to. It's going to attack, actually, but it does get to attack. Okay. All right. So it's going to. Uh, it will It will move. It's going to. Booming Blade's going to go off. All right, cool. So it's going to take 15 additional thunder damage. Okay. It's going to attack you, Rogal, because you are uh, probably the most dangerous threat around. Uh-huh. What's your armor class right now? Did you cast? Uh, I did cast last turn. Um, so you're at 22? It puts me at 21. 21. All right, you're going to get hit. You're going to take a total of 13 slashing and 7 cold. All right, so 10 slashing and three, three or cold. four cold. Yep. Three so, cold. So 13 damage? Yep. Second no, attack? Guys are losers. We're getting knocked down by this. No. You do, you do have to, you, you also have to make a con check for shield of faith. Oh, okay. And the last attack does not hit. Con check or con save? A con, a con save. It's a con uh, saving yeah, con saving throw. It's got to be 10 or it's, better. Yeah, it's not going to be yeah, so you're too hard. I just need to roll a 2. Yeah, basically not a 1. <laughs> so it, second attack actually yeah, gets a, a 12. Yeah. It rolls a nat uh, 1. So you're on. Un, you're unaffected by the second attack. We go to the group now. Um, can I attack? Sure. Yes. Please. You drop Edmund? Get... Um, no, I want to... I, 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 I one arm around me. Well, actually, yeah. I don't think I picked him up. Oh, um, you did. You were. I, I grabbed his like leg or something. You were ready to drag him. I was ready to drag him. Yeah. Yeah. You have advantage on your first attack because a muffin is aiding you. Hey. All right. Hell yeah. All right. So first attack. Yeah. Uh, second attack. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Twenty six uh, does hit. Uh, what was the other one? Did 21. You, uh, 21. 21, 21 and hit? 26. Yeah, they both hit. Nice. All right. Um, boom and boom. Totals. Um, both both plus seven? Totals. Um, I think it's plus six. Plus strength. Six. Yeah, strength plus, plus two. 
Yeah, so it's plus, so 12 plus 8, 20, 20, 20 damage. 20. Joey, how do you kill this Yeti? Uh, ooh, um, I, uh, as it, as it gazes, as it, as it swipes at me and then tries to, to gaze into my, my soul, I, um, I cleave into like its collarbone and I see it like drown on its own blood. And I, I gaze back into its eyes. A lot of gazing. Lots of gazing. All right, Andrew, you're going to get gazed right now. So chilling oh, I, gaze. Give I'm me a... Dis- oh, it's not... When it attack. If it attacks me, I will do a reaction to impose disadvantage. Yeah, Warden yeah, yeah, but this is the chilling gaze first. So give All me right. a con saving throw. Uh, okay, here we go. Ooh. 12. You are paralyzed for, for the duration. Um, you're also going to take this much damage. Nine cold damage. Is that, I've got resistance, right? So it's actually four. It's actually four, correct. Uh, but you're paralyzed. And okay. now we go to its attack. So it's going to make its claw attacks it on you. It has advantage. Yep. So the first one, a 25. Can I do... I guess I can't do Warden. So it doesn't... Let me see here. It says here you uh, are paralyzed. Target piece of saving throw at the end of each turns. I mean, it doesn't. If you're paralyzed, do you lose your reaction? Paralyzed. Yeah. I have it right here. It says paralyzed creatures incapacitated, can't move or speak, automatically fail strength and deck saves. Attack rolls have advantage against it, and any attack that hits the creature is a critical. Uh, yeah. Let's see, warden. Playing. So you can ward it. Yeah. What is? But what does it require? If it requires verbal. It just components. says. Does you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll, causing light to flare before the attack before it hits. I, I would say you can do it. Doesn't say you lose your reactions, but but you're going well, to well, if you get hit. intervenes. Yeah. Well, it gets disadvantage because of the ward in play. Right. So the, is it on the first attack? Correct. Well, yeah. When it swings at me with something that it rolls to hit. Sixteen then instead of a twenty-five. So I've got twenty right now because I got shield of faith up. Okay, so it's going to get a 16, which is going to miss. Its second claw attack does still have advantage, and that's going to have a 23, which means it's going to do uh, it's going to do a crit as well, which means it's going to be... Let me see here. I want to do this right. Uh, oh, no, incapacitated is... You can't take advantage of it. He's not incapacitated. He's just paralyzed. Paralyzed includes incapacitated. 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 That is correct. Yeah. Wow. Why wouldn't they yeah. just include that in? Why didn't paralyzed? they just say that? Yeah. Well, either yeah. way, you're you're gonna get hit twice, so don't you don't don't waste that reaction. You have it. Uh, I'm giving it back to myself. But you're gonna get hit, and it's gonna take. Let's see here. Yeah. So I'm gonna roll the damage here. It's gonna it's gonna be quite a bit here. It's gonna be doubled. So not doubled. Uh, six plus. So it's going to be 24 plus 4d6. Here you go. A mixture of cold damage. I'll take the second dice as cold damage. So let's go with... Let's see here. So it's going to be a total of 12 plus 6 is 18. 18 cold damage. And 12 plus 11 is 23 slashing damage. So 23 slashing and 18 cold so that's you, nine cold, right? Correct. And that's the total. So that what's that? That's thirty. So I've taken thirty-two damage this turn. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't get any damage from the ray. Did I? I lost track at that point. Uh, you didn't. When it paralyzed me. No, the ray did did do damage. Did uh, four, I believe. Four. So that's a yeah. total of thirty-six damage this turn. That makes okay. sense. Okay. Got it. Now, how, uh, however, you have, you have to make an eighteen contact. Do you have a spell up? <laughs> yeah. I've got a spell up, yeah. All right, so you, for concentration, you need to make it 18. Yeah. Oh. Actually, it was higher than 18, wasn't it? It's 36 divided by 2. Yeah, but it's they're separate I, attacks. I fail anyway. They're separate attacks. They're separate attacks, but a 9 is definitely not going to do it. No. Because uh, one attack would have been, at the very least, 
uh, 20. Yeah, it would have been 12 plus 9. That would have been. That would have been 21. So All right, so your actually spell, would have been 10. Your spell goes down. 11. At the end of. Right. Uh, let's see. At the end of. It says here, you target repeat the saving throw at the end of its turns. So you can you can make the save at the end of your turn. All right. That's the Yeti. We go to the group. Uh, can we kill this Yeti right next to me or attack it somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, like you, right now. Do you, do you want to make your saving throw? <laughs> if you want to get healed, if you want Luke to not die, does, Luke needs to make a saving no, throw. Luke, right? He's, Luke's, he's Luke's awake. Fine. Luke's oh. fine. Oh, all right. Um, I can't go because I already went this round. I can go. Go ahead, Velen. I'll uh, hit it with another Wand of Magic Missiles. Yep, which Yeti? Uh, the one by um, Elias. Elias, yeah. You go see that the, the Yeti could damage the book. Yes, exactly. That's uh, right. So. Eight. Not a great roll. Eight damage. Eight damage. Alright. Alright, we go to the Yeti down below. It'll use its gaze on Velen. Velen, give me a saving throw, con save. And it's going to attack the walrus. Just tell me what you get. Call it out. She got a 16. 16. 16? Okay. Alright, so you uh, you do pass, Velen. The claws on the walrus are going to do a total of 13 and 5, so 18 damage to the walrus. Walrus is hardy. All right, now we go to the group. Uh, Who's left? Ro- I, uh, Edmund? I am left. Me and Luke. Uh, can I see the Yeti from where I am, or is this hill in the way? Uh, it, it might be in the way a bit, but I'd say since the Yeti's so tall, it's just going to give him half cover. Okay. Cool. I'm going to shoot it with an arrow with my longbow. Okay. And that's not... Nope. <laughs> it hits me. <laughs> with, a nat- with a natural one. It, it, it hits it you hit and me. knocks you out of your paralysis. <laughs> Well, I tried. Okay. Um, All right, we go to I'm on the ground. Luke, like, flinging arrows up in the air, just hoping they land where they're supposed to. And Elias, you can make your check. You haven't gone yet this round. Oh, yeah, I'll Elias, you go should go. First. I'll just do it. What is it? A con check. Con check. That's all I can do, right? Yeah. Luke gets up and moves three more spaces and throws his second spear at 22. the next to you and fails. 22, so you're no longer paralyzed at the end of this round. Yes, but I'm about to get... Edited. You're about to get messed up. Well, no, it's so. gone. It can't go to the next round. Yeah, that's true. All right, now we go to the new round. Oh, the walrus. I'm going to roll oh, the did walrus. did Luke do anything? Luke threw his spear, but but missed. He rolled a four. Yeah. Um, let's roll. Uh, let's see. Julius, give me a d20. I got a 16. You got an eight. Okay. All right. Let's see. We'll go with the Yeti next to Elias, because that Yeti needs to go. It's going to use... Warden uh, Flame. What's that? If it tries to attack me with a roll, I'm going to ward it. Yeah. But it's going to try to chill and gaze you again. Oh. Yep. Oh, sorry. It can't affect you, though. It can only affect uh, new people. So it'll do it on the person that's charging at it, Luke. Uh, Andrew, roll for Luke. He's got a plus one con. Yep, coming up. Rogal, you're within 10 feet? Oh, no, you're not. 15. Okay, he passes anyway. And then he's going to slash you twice with his claws. All right, Warden. First one, an 11 with Warding Flame. Second one, a critical hit. Oh, no. (laughs) So it should be... Okay, yeah, so it's going to be a total of 12, 13, 14, 15. That's not so bad. 15. How much is cold? Uh, Three cold. All right, so 
one cold. So what's that? And so it's one oh, cold. I see. So 13 in total because of your cold resistance. Okay, so 13. 13. Oh, I'm still up. You are still up. With three hit points? Three, yeah. Oh, okay. So just to clarify here before we go into the rest of the round, you have three hit points. Luke has one. Edmund has six. <laughs> Julius has... Where's Julius? 17. 17. Rogal has 17. Velen has 14. This may be the lowest that I think anyone, the whole group has been throughout the campaign. No. All right. Next up. Who's up? Uh, well, it's already attacked me, so... I fireball it. Okay, go for it. I'm, I'm using everything I got. Roll that damage. <laughs> to try to make it higher this time. Roll that damage. 11. Nice. 37. <laughs> oh my god. That's a good one. That's the best one. <laughs> this yeti is scorched. It cries out in pain. It's still alive. Uh, I will Muffin? have Muffin fly over and aid Kay. Elias on his this next yeti attack. He's going to move here. It's going to use his gaze on, uh, let's see, Rogal. No, you made your save against it, didn't you? You're Rogal's the only person that, that made it the first time, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's just going to move up and attack because I think everyone here has made it. Yeah. Here we go. Let's go with uh, its attack on you, Velen. Claw. Claw. 12 and 8. Not going to hit you. Right? Nope. Okay. 13 is nice. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, so that's the Yeti's turn. Who's up next? Edmund or Rogal? Or Velen? Well, if I... Rogal wants to drag me, I can. I but... shall drag him. Move. Um, Follow direction? him, Edmund. Edmund, nope. where? where? Uh, I would kill the one to the north because it's nearly dead. And then I can fire all the other one because it's my turn coming up. Wherever, I mean, I don't want to be next to these things, but wherever Rogal wants to go, I'm not going to. I, um, I have yeah. a longbow. One, two, three, and that's it? So yeah, we, but you unless, could... Unless you double move, then you can move you, six. Right, you could go here, yeah. You could drag him this way, sure. And then, yeah, I guess I'll double move. And, yeah, Edmund, do you want to shoot your bow at this one? I do. Okay. Yeah. One, two. Oh, yeah. You're bringing him up the hill. Yeah. Then I was bringing me down the hill. Oh well, no, no, no. Uh, I guess <laughs> up the hill. I guess up the hill. No, at, he's got a clear the, shot over there. At the apex, you could take the shot, Edmund. Okay. And then I'll bring him down the hill. Go ahead. Roll your hit. Uh, I will. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the guy. But... <laughs> you could hit a lot. I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah. Edmund, so please describe how. Edmund Bryceen kills this oh, Yeti. On, I gotta... Oh, good shot, Edmund. Good shot. And there's actually more damage because it's additional 46. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Nice. Sneak attack. Very impressive. Elias is like, a little higher. <laughs> Aim a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Plus another. So 28 damage as I get it right in the eye. <laughs> And it's, and it's screaming mouth, the arrow in the, <laughs> through the, the, the palate into its brain as it tries to glare and stare and whatever <laughs> it does. Glare. It tries to, it's, and the, wow. the blue glow from its eyes just kind of fades out as it slumps down. Nice. And Elias is stunned. All right, who's next? Uh, we have two left. Elias is also over here, right? I can go next. Yeah, Elias, go ahead. There's one oh, more Yeti. Me. I'm going to do um, okay, Sacred Flame here. on it. Okay. Wisdom? Uh, no, it's... Um, Dex? Dex save. Total of 11. It fails, takes 7 Radiant damage. Okay. And I'm going to join my friends over here. Valen. I'm going to try one more time to um, do the 
anything that I can never make work for of sickness. Okay. <laughs> Been wanting to do it for pretty much every single episode we've had a battle, and it's never worked, but I, let's I rolled try. a nat 20. Nat 20, though. Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Luke I'm is going to... Luke is gonna run and grab his spear and then join the rest of the group and he yells to Velen to leave it. Let's run. Uh can I can I run? Yeah. Well well it, it you <laughs> could you could run, but it, it it's gonna be uh attack of opportunity. Disengage. She yeah, attacked. Already, she already yeah. used the spell. Yeah, she attacked. Yeah. So that's uh, fine. Akuma is gonna body flop and tusk him. Tusk's gonna hit, and Body Flop's gonna hit. Body Flop does, no joke, 10 damage. And the Tusk, 18 damage. Yeah. Ooh. This yet, he's dead. Akuma just pounces on top of it and slams its Tusk into its skull. Amazing. And then he says, That's how you do it. Velen has a new appreciation for this. Hop on! Check. Hop on! <laughs> yeah, on, sure. You hop onto Akuma and he'll, he'll uh he's only moves twenty feet, so he's only gonna go to like here. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so uh that's the end of combat here. At the end of the combat, I'm gonna just switch the music here. It's not the right music now. Alright. At the end of the combat, you all gather yourselves. You Luke will pick up his, his last spear. But I know you're all really trying to, to run and, and book it to the to the ship. Slash put whale blubber on Edmund. <laughs> yeah, I, I assumed we did that. Yeah, we did that. So you, you look up at the sky. The aurora is starting to dim. And you hear the giant flapping wings. You can't see much because of the snow and the darkness, but you hear the flapping of wings approaching Grimskull. All right, everybody. Keep Where do we go? It. Keep moving. Let's let's go back. Let's, let's take a short rest. Uh, yeah, a we go to the tomb, the frost giant tomb. You might want to do that. <laughs> All right, Rogal, make your make your move here. Let's see if Angaju got uh, the message. Rogal, by the way, the chat has been a buzz over what uh, you're doing. Are you performing surgery off screen? <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, listen. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you don't go to Mexico to get an illegal kidney. <laughs> like sometimes you go to uh, to Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> um, oh no, uh, just just some some comedian uh, friends are stopping by. Had to say hi. Had oh, okay, to keep so up it, the, the social gotcha. social appearances, the networking. So it's a there's a what, what was the one time you were doing? There was a party in your house. Oh, you were like, I just have to be a part of. It was just a small party in my house. <laughs> I, I, I've got four roommates. We got a lot of people coming in and out. All right. Um, <laughs> so let's uh, let's continue on, Rogal. Where would you like right. to go next? One, and we're done. <laughs> like, that was the that was the last space we had, right? That was the last space you had to last go to. Space. Okay. Edmund. Yeah. And well, Juke. Edmund. You're gonna give me a con check. Well he has whale blubber. No, well, you still take the check. If you fail, you use the whale blubber. Oh. I thought. Oh, he's, near me. Uh, he's near me. Well, we all have to make checks anyway. Uh, yeah. Everyone has <laughs> to make checks. They're all near me. They're all <laughs> hugging me. Yeah, you're all within within Rogal's aura. Yeah, we we know that. Go ahead, everybody. Give me your con checks. What does the aura give us again? Plus four. So I guess going for cold resistance. Yes, you now have advantage on the roll. Felon is real good. 27. 26. 27. 24. 24. Uh, well, I wasn't supposed to roll twice, but I got a 26. Okay. Edmund, the roll that mattered. You did fail. Dead. So you're using the whale blubber, correct? Yes. The whale yeah. blubber was already applied so that I didn't have to 
It's a fail. It's a fail safe. But if you pass, the well blubber would continue for any further checks. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, it would be a. It would be a fail safe. It lasts for one day. Oh. Okay. Yeah. The whale blubber was the. It's basically like you have to decide when you want to put it on, because you need it before the check. So if you take another check in the next twenty-four hours, you won't get the use of the whale blubber. All right. All right, everybody. So you get to uh, the edge here. Now, there's no dock here because you did not uh, make it to the original spot. You look out into the water, the frigid, icy water. And after waiting for maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, you call out to Angajuk. You're, you're looking for some sort of help or relief. You see that in the ice, you see the outline of the massive sperm whale as it starts to break through it's maybe <clears throat> maybe uh maybe 30 40 feet from the edge we'll just say 30 feet it's 30 feet from the edge of the shoreline and it's out on on the ice it broke through so just I'm, about there i'm gonna cast water walk on the group and we're just gonna wander up on it I'm sure. just going to cast mist, Misty Step and go right to him. Sure, you could do that. So <laughs> you cast Water Walk, and then you Misty Step, so you get to the edge of the ice where Ongajuk is. I can't walk. It's ten, ten willing creatures. Yeah. Uh, you're, I assume you're riding the walrus with Velen. I assume. Or Rogal's carrying you. Rogal's carrying Yeah, one or the other. So you head onto the ice. You venture out there. It's at this point where the the storm picks back up again. The wind is blowing. A swirling blizzard quickly surrounds you. Dive. Julius. Dive. <laughs> what was that noise? I have no idea. <laughs> the blizzard. Was, uh, an amber alert on my phone. No, it wasn't oh. amber alert. <laughs> okay. I thought it was well, the klaxons of a submarine. <laughs> I thought it was yeah. the blizzard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> dive, dive. So. The, the the blizzard picks up real real heavy. Hard to see. Julius, you look back as you misty step forward. You look your companions are coming. You see something behind them starting to appear from the blizzard. You see it's a very large creature. At the at the time that it first appears, you can't really make out exactly what it is, but you see an owl head. I just shout run <laughs> its body starts to appear slowly head forming first and the snow comprising making up the rest of its body it's long lanky it wears blue robes its eyes glow blue and when it speaks you know exactly who this is O'Real speaks to you telepathically Julius and actually, you know what? She will announce to everyone um, so that you're all aware of her presence. You look back and you see the Frost Maiden there standing on the edge of the bank. You're all maybe, you know, 10 to 20 feet in your, in your march across the ice towards Ongajuk. And the Frost Maiden comes to form and says, You've been a thorn in my side for too long. We're going to finish this now. You can respond. No, we're not. Run. <laughs> I, I run. I just, I keep talking to the group. I'm going like, come on, we gotta yeah, go. I, I, I keep, I, I'm just, I have, I'm like, like carrying Edmund, <laughs> like with both arms, like, I'm. I, I, I shall finish the endless winter. I shout back. If you want to end this now, we will end it. Rogal, put me down. <laughs> I, I just keep running. <laughs> like grab them by the scruff of their neck and like try to drag them. She can't because she's smaller than you all probably, but she does Yeah, not totally like. smaller, yeah. Um, I cast Meteor Swarm. Go for it. That's wall it, doesn't, it doesn't work. It's <laughs> the ninth level spell. I know. <laughs> Julius. I say, I'd say Elias. Like, like, run over our retreat. Uh, uh, the Frost Maiden will continue to speak 
telepathically. She looks, though, at you, Julius, and says, On this island, I am the cold. I am the frost that clings to your frozen body. In my abode, I am in communion with everything. I felt her. I felt her body fail. Every ounce of her preserved in eternal rhyme. She gave in at the end. I asked you once if you would court death to receive my blessing. Well, Nass, she vowed to be a follower of mine, not just in this life, but forevermore. And she steps to the side, and behind her is the mostly frozen body of Nass Lantamir. Her animated corpse stands before you. The Frost Maiden puts her clawed hand on Nass's head, and at that moment she looks up into the air, and a beam of light emits from her face, similar to the cold light walkers that you've faced before. What do you do? Run. Run. Julius, run. I, I... Come, Julius. We can finish this now. Am uh, I struggle free from Rogal? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to struggle free from Rogal. All right. Oppose athletics check. <laughs> I'm struggling free from Rogal. Do I'm... What? <laughs> and I am standing uh, before. He can't move, Frost Rogal. Remember, he remove. just he just wants you to put him down. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I'm going to stand uh, in front of the Frost Maiden. Say, I am Edmund Brycene friend to all the ten towners and your endless winter will stop it will cease and we will end this now and i turned to everyone and said, run get out of here <laughs> and i draw my sword and i point it at the frost maiden she looks at you she kind of uh chuckles you hear the telepathic laughter. And she looks to Julius and says, if you, if you would like, I can have Nass end your friend's life. He can join my army. I, I'm gripping my sword really hard. Melon will yell, don't be a fool, Edmund. Uh, sorry. So Nass just looks like uh, one okay. of those cold light walkers, but it's clearly Nass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, before the light emitted from her face, right? It was Nass, and you could see it was the animated corpse of her body. But didn't I feel that her soul was released after we got the book? The book. Sure. You know? Yeah. You can. You can think she's, what you'd like. I'm just yeah. gonna. I'm just gonna say that is not Nass. And you're a liar. And we will take care of this. We will finish this. But now is not the time. Come on, Edmund. We gotta go. I grab Edmund and I start dragging him. The Frost Maiden uh, commands I... uh, Nas Lantimere to go and telepathically says to the group, but aimed at Julius, Do you really think that her soul can rest when she's in my domain? I um, I say to Edmund, I'm like, dude, like I know you're being brave and all, but I, I, I'm not gonna leave you here. Julius, don't listen. Keep moving. I I do. I, I'm already on the on Angajuk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're on Angajuk. I double move to Angajuk. Uh, Edmund, where Ed, Ed, it's really up to Edmund right now. What's what's going on with Edmund? I mean, Edmund, if if Rogal's going to drag him, he's, there's not a whole lot he can do to try and stop it other than just, like, struggle to, like, tell him to let go. Uh, I mean, you could talk to is, Rogal. He's going to, I mean, he's saying, like, Rogal! And, like, he's going to, like, take his bag off and he's going to, like, hand it to Rogal and he's going to say, uh, and he's going to, 
turn to everyone. Uh, if if this is necessary, you must get on. She's she will probably pursue us. Uh, we need to stop her. Edmund, you need you to move. <laughs> like you're not gonna <laughs> stop her. <laughs> This is very I will brave delay of you. her as be- I I can delay her as best I can. Uh but not moving. <laughs> she's going to attack. Uh we're going to go wait. into combat here. No. Roll <laughs> initiative. Wait, Roll wait. initiative Dasha. <laughs> yeah. A 9. Oh no, I sorry. Ro- that was I rolled a 9. I rolled a 5. I saw both at the same time. Me too. It's confusing. <sighs> All right, so you rolled a five, and she rolled a nine. All right, everybody. It's been fun, guys. Let's uh, let's do this. Oh my god! How can we fight a demigod? We just gotta get out of here. Wait, why? What is going on, CJ? What is the plan? Is the plan to like directly die? Get on, get on, on Angajuke, and get out of here. How yeah. far are we from Angajuk right now, like each person? You're all within 20 feet at the most. Okay. Yeah, we get on. I, I get on. on well, CJ. She goes first. Yeah. Nice. Nas Lantimir is starting to walk out onto the ice towards you. Rogal, you're still arguing with him, right? I mean, I'm, I'm dragging him as I'm arguing with him. Yeah. Um, Rogal and Julius. Not Julius. Rogal and Edmund. I need dexterity saving throws. Does this does your aura affect this or just Yes. Yes it does. Okay. All saving throws. Okay. What I roll? You rolled a right. twelve 16. plus four. Fourteen. You got a 14, Evan? Mm-hmm. Rogal, you got a... 16. 16? Okay. You both fail. Is this an no. You both fail. A oh. hail of uh, rock-hard ice starts to pound the area around you in a cylinder. And you're each going to take this much damage. I'll roll them both. So this is the bludgeoning damage you're going to take. So six bludgeoning, and here's the cold damage you're gonna take. Okay. Ah. So you're gonna take six bludgeoning and 19 cold. You uh, are. Uh, you're also. Wait. Uh, in on. difficult terrain, so the 20 foot radius of this, basically the entire ice patch that you're on from you to Angajuk is now difficult terrain. That could have killed me. So I take. I take 12 damage. Uh, you take three from the bludgeoning. And nine from the nine. And nine, the so 12. Yes, how much hit points do you have left? I'm at, seven, I'm at five hit points. Right five, now. okay. Oh and, my god. <laughs> and Edmund, are you? I am at zero. You're at zero, okay. All right. And uh, Nas Lantimir's body double moves to make it to your to your position on the ice. Okay, you're up, group. Um, does anybody want to help me get to... Uh... All right. So... Um, I'm going to... So two people are down, right? No, just CJ. Yeah. Just me. No. Oh. So, with difficult terrain, what does that do? Double your Happy movement, movement, so... So, if I can you only just grab move... Just So, if I can only move... I can only move a quarter. Yep. Yeah. So I can only move a total of 15, even if I were to double. Move. Correct. Uh, you move that far, you'll be farther away from her. I would say you'd be right. You'd be five feet away from Angajuk if you do that. Yeah, do it. Because yeah. Edmund, I assume, was the furthest up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say you maybe moved what? maybe halfway. So actually, you know what? I said it's 30 feet away. Let's say you're smack in the middle. You could get to Ongajuk with your 15 feet movement. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, um, 
I do it. I get time. You double move. Yeah, I double move. Okay. All right, so you double move to the to the whale. Yeah, I um, toss I toss Edmund's body in there, <laughs> and I, I, I jump in. All right, so you get to Angajuk. Is anybody else still on the ice? Get I'm, in the Angajuk! I'm going to go into Angajuk. Okay. I'm going to cast Wall of Fire to separate us on Angajuk from yes! the horribleness. So so you you cast oh. Wall of, of Fire. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes! Uh, then I'm going to get on Angaju. Good. So you cast Wall of Fire and... It disappears. <laughs> no, it, it, it stays there. However, uh, a heavy blizzard comes again and Oriel reforms on the other side of the fire wall as her legendary action. Die! She is, Die. Now, she is now within, I guess, 20 feet of Ongajuk. Um... Nas Lantimir's body will be behind the wall, though. I I use my action to tell Angajuk to dive. Dive, dive. Wait, is everyone on? Yeah. Yes. All right, yeah. Like Go get out of here. And it's at that point where you look up and you see two gargoyles flying down towards the, uh, towards, uh, the Frost Maiden. And she looks up. And she starts to fight with these gargoyles as they pounce on her, causing her a moment of distraction. Ongajuk says, you got it, buddy. And he dives down deep. And as you lose sight of the, of the frost maiden, because the level of the water and ice starts to rise, right? You're, you're diving. You just see her swatting those gargoyles away like they're, like they're mosquitoes. Everest, save us. Everest was useful for once. Oh my god. She just wants the book. Don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> Still have the book, Elias. He looks and he doesn't. Elias, you still have the book, right? I, I have the book. What did, what, did I, what did I do with it? We shall study it later when we are recovered. I, um, oh I, no, he threw it in the fire. I cast <laughs> a um I cast a land hand point on Edmund. Edmund. Okay. <laughs> did we beat her? Did we finish her off? I, I wait, hold on. I, I, I then I then like uh non lethally smack um Edmund. Actually I give him two points just so I can smack him with that one point. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, like, don't word on myself. You ever, ever try and sacrifice yourself again. Ever. You are the leader of this group. God damn it. I say like angrily. Uh, like really emotional, honestly. I walk over to Elias and I put my hand down and I say can I have her spell book now please I say we should study the spell book when we no, are he means recovered Elias. No, he means Na- I mean Nass's spell book give him Nass's oh. spell book oh I'm so sorry old friend <laughs> and I pull it out and I very carefully hand it to him with deference Oh. I I hope it brings you some comfort. And furthermore, when her spirit inhabited me, I was there the whole time. When we got the codicil of the white in our possession, her spirit was relieved. It was greatly relieved. I believe it was just her physical form that was was raised, not her spirit. So rest easy. Whatever happened to her ferret? I believe it too, but O'Reel will pay. The ferret dissipated when she stopped possessing me. O'Reel will pay for playing with my mind and showing me these terrible visions. It's been quite a day. But we'll thank, thank you for this. I hope it brings you comfort. And I'll go kind of just walk into a corner, like wrapping my arms around the book. It's not a very big cabin on Ongajuk, but yes. I will sit <laughs> in my own spot. <laughs> I will walk to the captain's quarters. <laughs> By the way, in that in that uh, crazy moment, Luke obviously hopped on as well, just shoring up the NPCs here. Uh, the walrus. What was oh his name no! Again? He can swim. No, he's fine. He's yeah. He's actually okay. swimming alongside Ongajuk. Yay! <laughs> so I forget his name now. What was his name again? Uh, Azu- Izunagi. Akuma. 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 
Akuma, yeah. So Akuma, Akuma is is swinging the alongside on Drew. The last boss of Street Fighter. Yes. Akuma. Hey, hey, you guys, did you find what you were looking for? We did, Akuma. Okay. We found it indeed. Oh, and what was that again? A book. A book. With great information on how to end the endless winter. Oh boy. Well, I'm glad that you all came back in one piece. Where to next? Somewhere to rest. Please. Oh. I'm quite tired. Oh yes, rest. We should rest. Yeah, rest. Rest would be welcome. Uh, what's what's the Bremen? Perhaps is Bremen. Bremen didn't get destroyed, right? Should well, we, we can't. Should we go have, to East Haven? We can't go because the the. The thing, the sperm whale can only drop us off somewhere on the sea of moving ice. Yeah, but Bremen is the most northern town, right? Lonelywood. I, Lonelywood? Lonelywood Bremen or, or Bremen, Bremen or yeah. Lonelywood. But we should rest before that, right? Well, where are we going to rest? Hmm. It's cold on out. Anger juke. On anger juke. Can we rest underwater? Uh, <laughs> we I mean, we're we did bubble. before. You did I before. can make a woman's tiny hut and we can oh, rest yeah. there for an hour when we're on land. Or on Angajuk. Yeah, you could you could definitely rest. Okay, so Angajuk is gonna keep going under the ice and uh, bring you south towards uh, the mainland of Iceland, Icewind Dale, towards the uh, northern side of the Sea of Moving Ice. Uh, and I think we're gonna end it here. That is where we'll end it. We'll go. We'll next turn. Uh, next time. We'll pick it back up when we get back to uh, proper Icewind Dale, and uh, in the next week or so, maybe you'll you'll we'll communicate and you'll tell me what your next moves might be, so I could plan it. But I know that you, I think the biggest thing is to find the uh, where to enter Yithrin. Mm -hmm. um, so we can we can discuss that over the next week and and get there. So, wow, and what a to what find a session. Avarice. Avarice. Find that guy. It, uh, we're we think that Avarice has that information. Yeah, right? she, we she need to, does. The guy has that information. Yeah, yeah. Avarice does. <laughs> the, the, the guy that she probably got the information from and killed. <laughs> He's oh, pretty she savvy. wouldn't do that. She totally did that. Well, we, all, we were all going to do that, so. Mm. All right. Well, yeah. Rogal wouldn't have let us do that, though. She would have just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say we'll end it here. Next week, same time, eight thirty, probably eight forty-five, knowing us. Um, yes, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever we go live with a new video. Follow on Twitch, and uh, yeah, we'll see you all on the tabletop. Have a good night, everybody. Adios. Excuse me. <laughs> Peace. We all made it.